Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Isolescu. I am the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today I will review Lindbergh's 1925 Ford Model T Street Rod in 1 32nd scale. This is kit number 72146. This model is a skill level 2 kit which means that you will need paint and glue to put it together. In the 1950s America was at its height. World War II was over and the economy was booming. Automobile manufacturers were producing entirely new car designs each year. It was at this time that the hot rod and custom car culture began. When World War II was raging, people could not buy a new car because the factories were making weapons for the war. When the war ended, everyone demanded a new car. Old cars were everywhere and selling for cheap. A large number of teenagers bought these cars removed the fenders, the hood, and replaced the engines with something more powerful. This Lindbergh kit represents a typical hot rod of the 1950s. In fact, this kit was produced by Palmer in the 1950s and has returned many times since then. The best version is the Happy Days car from the 1970s. Looking at the box on this new edition, the two called out features of this kit are the detailed chassis and the detailed tires. This is rather unusual because this model includes many other detailed items that would make a good selling feature, like the excellent tuck and roll interior, the Z frame, and the outstanding 1956 Oldsmobile spinner hubcaps. A parts count comes out to a total of 39 pieces. The box recommends that you should be 10 years old to build this kit. I do believe that a very apt 8 year old could assemble this kit with adult supervision. This is what you will see when you open the box. The model is wrapped in a plastic bag. Instructions and glass are underneath. These are all the parts of the model. Unfortunately there are no chrome plated parts, but you could always paint those parts silver or use a chrome product like Elclad or bare metal foil. Since this is a hot rod you could also paint the parts body color or a contrasting color. The sky is the limit. This is one of the few kits in the series with a complete engine, and what a sweet engine it is. It is the engine of choice for all early hot rods, a 1949 Cadillac V8. The real engine was a powerhouse and was dropped into almost every hot rod in custom until 1955 when Chevrolet introduced their V8. This is why a lot of the cars of this era became known as Fordalacs. The beautifully illustrated instructions are easy to follow because they show an exploded parts view of the assembly steps with well written directions. I have to admire the instructions. It is obvious that Lindbergh took a set of vintage plans and added a new heading with directions and warnings in English, French, Japanese, German, Spanish, Italian and Dutch. It also includes the Ford official licensing logo. I would like to know what the Rebel looked like. One thing to look out for on this kit is the amount of mold marks. The small circles must be removed for realism and to resolve parts fit issues. These mold marks are not as common on this kit as they are on some of the other Lindbergh 132 kits and some of the mold marks will be hidden when you glue the engine together and put it into the car, like the marks on the back of the radiator. However, the marks on the interior floorboards must go. I remove these with a number 16 hobby blade. Finally, the model suffers from high seam lines and flash or thin excess plastic that gets squeezed out between tiny gaps in the two part mold process. You can easily remove these with your number 11 hobby blade and some sandpaper. All in all, for a model kit that has been in production for over 60 years, this car holds up well and maintains the look and feel of an era gone by. With the resurgence of rat rods to our modern car culture, this model would make a fine addition. If you collect 132nd scale kits, want a quick build model, or are looking for a good first time model kit, then I recommend this model to you.